Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator and of course recently world update number 13 dropped which also meant the release of the ATR 72 600 series. The ATR 42 600 series has also been released as well. This is going to be a video dedicated to the uh, ATR 72 version and we're going to give you a tutorial in getting this aircraft all set up from cold and dark and we're going to take it on a very short route around the Canaries. Now first impressions of this aircraft I haven't had too long to spend with this aircraft but I actually really do like this. Now normally you'll know me from this channel as uh, being a an Airbus guy, an Airbus pilot, well there is actually a lot of similarities between this aircraft and the way you set up the Airbus. The uh, flight management computer for example is called a McDo and the way it works I find a lot more intuitive than Boeing but it's got a little less of the automation that you would normally find on an Airbus. For instance, there is no auto thrust, auto throttle, that kind of thing, so power management for the propeller airline has to be done by yourself which I know many of you like because the automation of the Airbus, whilst impressive, doesn't give you a proper hands-on piloting feel, whereas an aircraft such as this, you've got to monitor all the way through. So let's get on board and enjoy taking a first look at this amazing new aircraft. So for this tutorial then, we are going to do a full cold and dark setup for our short flight today. But before we go any further, one of the things that you're going to have to get right is how your thrust settings are all calibrated. Now this is done using the onboard EFB just in the uh, the options page top right and then you can see the top right there is a throttle setup just here. Let's select that and now because I normally fly the Airbus with my uh, Thrustmaster TCA pack then I've got a dual axis for this but you'll notice that I've actually only got single axis uh, set at the top. Now the reason for that is because obviously this is a, a prop airliner then I have got one of my XC's set to control um, the power setting not thrust as uh, I understand it's called for propel airliners so we've got one to uh, control the power setting and then we've got one to control the uh, condition levers the prop power so if you like axis number one is for uh, for the power and then axis number two is for uh, for the prop condition levers so in order to set this up I'm just going to quickly show you how I've done that in uh, in the settings itself just come down to the control options so here's the ATR profile which I've set up and if I show you my power management so one is set to the throttle which is the uh, the left hand uh, the left hand axis and then I've got my other one set to the propeller which is if you like the uh, the right hand axis just down there at the bottom notice which ones you'll need to set up is propeller one and propeller two axis and throttle one and throttle two axis and not the throttle one zero to one hundred percent which I know some aircraft do use. In fact, if you fly the, if you fly the Phoenix A320, then this is the same axis that that uses. So that's quite nice and easy to uh, to set up. Okay, so now that's been set up in your control options. What you'll then need to go and do is you will have to go and configure this here on the EFB. And this is done pretty much uh, self-explanatory. So what you can do is you can see the raw input values there moving on the right as I uh, move my uh, left hand lever up and down and of course just then when you're at idle you can set that when you set this to notch which for my thrustmaster is uh, the 50% uh, gate or climb detent um, set that to notch and then for the um, MCT and flex if you're used to Airbus it is the uh, the ramp setting that I've got set just there once that's all done make sure you validate it and then select OK and then it will all be done at the moment you'll notice I'm moving this up and down it's not going any further and that's just because the gusset lock is turned on if I now get rid of that you'll see that we've uh, got that set up um, that set up so all of these detents and this is now uh, working now you're gonna have to manage this yourself of course because there is um, no auto thrust um, in the uh, in the ATR so it is going to be a little bit of power management done manually 
So next then, let's have a look at setting the payload in the EFB. Now, the Simbrief default profile for uh, this aircraft on Simbrief is slightly different to um, this ATR aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator, so the uh, the weights are slightly different. I have created a Simbrief profile which is accurate now for this aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator. There's a link in the video description which you can click and download that so you can use that yourself. And uh, you can confirm that you've got the correct one if you get your operational flight plan and there you can see the dry uh, operational weight is 13010 and we've also got that then here now obviously these figures um, we, uh, we we can't change so the empty weight is what it is all of the uh, crew weight and the payload weight etc well that is all done using the weights and balance screen here in Microsoft Flight Simulator so what we're going to have to do is once you've got your operational flight plan like this uh, so there you can see there's the payload etc and uh, there's our uh, our fuel our plan block fuel uh, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to set these in the menu uh, as we did right at the start before uh, more advanced aircraft came out and started uh, loading things through the EFB so you don't load the fuel through the EFB it's all done through the weights and balance uh, screen so there you can see a payload of five six seven six I'm gonna check uh, and get that in there first of all so uh, uh, payloads just here let's go set that uh, five six seven six so we've got to try just get it as close as we can can chances are you're not gonna get it perfect five six seven. okay that's uh, that's close enough to maybe a, a couple of uh, extra heavier bags and then uh, for the um, the plan block fuel that's around 1500 kilograms isn't it so let's uh, go and load that it's only a short flight today what makes these aircraft so uh, so good for the short hops is they are very economical there we go about one and a half tons of uh, fuel so we can double check now we've got our uh, total weight there is uh, around 20.2 and if we have a look at the operational flight plan there we can have a look at our uh, takeoff weight that is about 20 so bear in mind of course you're going to burn a bit of fuel as uh, as you're setting up uh, etc so that uh, that is as accurate as um, as we can probably get it you could go in and fine tune some of the uh, where the particular cargo is located and stuff like this but uh, that's entirely up to you for this tutorial we're just going to try and keep it nice and simple so that's it that's now set and those values will be reflected uh, on there as well Okay, so let's go and power the aircraft up and get her ready to start programming the uh, the flight management computer. Let's uh, start by checking first of all that uh, EEC one that needs to be uh, that needs to be popped in, which it is by default. And then we can come up to the top, turn on the battery, and that should illuminate screens two, four, and the uh, flight management computer number one. So that is located just here. So we pop that on. And we can just start to hear a few sounds. I have turned the uh, simulator sounds down a little bit for this video, just so uh, it's not uh, it's not too annoying and drowning me out while I'm speaking. But there you go, screen two, four, and the flight management system is also coming online. With those coming online, let's check that we've got the ground power available. We'll go to our aircraft menu. So ground power, let's turn that on. And that means now on the overhead, we can connect the uh, the external power. Now there's two things that we can connect here. We've obviously got one just there, the AC wild electrical power, and of course the main external power. So we are going to turn external power to on. And that then should give us power to all of the other screens. There we are. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the overhead and extinguish all of the white lights. Again, another thing very similar to Airbus and probably why I'm quite enjoying this aircraft at the minute. So we're going to extinguish all the white lights with the exception of the probe heat and the fuel pumps. So just trying to get into uh, position a little bit here to work through these. So the fuel pumps, white lights, they can remove main where they are we'll leave those uh, turned uh, turned on uh, beacon light for some reason the beacon light is turned on by default we should probably go through and make sure that that's off at the moment nav lights of course that's fine to uh, to leave on so the dc1 generator will um, extinguish those white lights uh, we've got no others on there so that's okay uh, we'll go through the next one so the probe heats we're leaving those ones off for the moment the windshield will 
turn those off and let's extinguish all of these as well. Once that's been done then you can also check that all of the bulbs are working. There we go, the uh, the Christmas tree switch. So there we go, that's uh, just part of a, uh, a normal setup procedure to be done, usually at the start of the day. Okay, that's done then. Now we're going to look at doing the fuel pump test. The fuel pump test means we need to go down to the pedestal just here and if we uh, press the systems button until the fuel dialog comes up there, that one ah there we are so this is what we're checking for so we need to check that the uh, the fuel pumps are uh, off there we go both sides and feed low pressure is illuminated the feed low pressure is just above the captain's head and on the fuel panel just there okay happy with that we can now start to get the fuel pumps on so we will uh, turn on engine number one's pump and of course we can see the fuel low pressure disappears and then once that's done we want to open this once pump one is on turn on the cross feed open that valve and you can just check that that is open and that shows just there let's turn that uh, now back off and we're going to turn on the second pump and that's done as well if we then work our way up we just want to check that the spoilers um, and the landing gear lights, of course, are down. TLU also should be set to auto, but this is all done by default, so you don't need to worry too much about that. Of course, then, if you're going for full procedures, you would want to do the, uh, the fire uh, checks. Now, there is uh, a couple of things to do for this. So you've got the uh, squib test, and you've also got the uh, fire test, that one the fault test and then the fire test itself so there's three independent tests that you can do for that uh, once you've uh, once you've finished again if you're going for full procedure you should then want to test the CRV now from what I understand this actually doesn't work at the moment but I'm sure that uh, with hot fixes and things that will come to fruition a little bit later on next thing to do then is you want to set the temperature and again I don't think this is quite right because the temperature at the moment it says in the cabin is um, around 66 degrees that's um, a little bit warm <laughs> it's uh, I don't think anyone needs to go on holiday uh, for warm temperatures at that so we're, we're just going to turn that down uh, so that's in the in the cabin and of course we can uh, select what it is we want to uh, what we want to change there but may maybe this should be in des uh, degrees Fahrenheit rather than uh, degrees C but uh, I'm sure we'll see uh, as you're working your way up through uh, through there again same thing three tests you can do one two and uh, and number three okay so that's pretty much the main part of the overhead all done for uh, for now next up we want to come down to the pedestal and we're going to check the ATPCS which is this little thing down here so we are going to do uh, the engine one test so if we do this we want to move this to the whoops move this that way so it says arm and then if we have a look up here we should see that that is armed in green and uh, and then after that we're going to go and set it to number one that should give us lots of master caution alarms and auto feather as well so let's turn that off and close that of course then you would uh, be able to do the same for engine number two the next couple of tests we need to run is the ice test again just press and hold that and there we go it just confirms that we've got icing there flashing uh, and then there's also the AMP test you can run and again if you just want to get up quickly you don't need to do all these I'm sure they all work by default but that uh, that's part of the uh, that full procedure apparently so I thought I would just show you that 
But now that's all done, it's time to start looking at the McDo. And yes, apparently it is a McDo. So that makes me feel right at home in this uh, in this aircraft. Just before we do, however, you'll notice that we are getting flashed with the hydraulic system loss. So hydraulic blue and the hydraulic green has got low pressure. Um, in order to rectify this, we want to pop on the external power just there. And that should then clear all of those okay so let's have a look at setting up the uh, the box so fms number one will pop that in and we want to of course uh, check the nav data and make sure that's all okay so if we um, if we select to in it and then nav data now Funnily enough, this says uh, it's last modified in 2022 and January 2022, so I'm not quite sure if that's accurate or not, because I do have a Simbrief, uh, sorry, a Navigraph um, database all installed in Microsoft Flight Simulator, so I'm not quite sure what is uh, what is going on there, but um, never mind. It's for, if you guys know how to uh, get that to display correct, then uh, please do leave a comment down below, because uh, I've not been able to... Uh, to get that to uh, get that sorted okay so we need to go next to a uh, position in it and of course if we get that from our GPS position pop that in there and then um, we can return so the aircraft now knows where uh, where it is and the next thing we're going to do then is we're going to do our flight plan in it so if we go to the route we can pop in our flight ID there that really doesn't matter for uh, for today but that would be where your call sign normally goes and then we're going to put where we're flying from and to so what I like about this is the box is very much more Airbus I think than uh, than it is Boeing I'd say it's a lot more intuitive so Again, we're just going to have to grab our uh, operational flight plan in order to do this. And I'm just wondering if, um, just wondering if I can pop out a, a screen here to see if that will work. So I can uh, I can pop out the screen as you can see, but there's uh, there's no buttons for it. So let's uh, let's just do it the old-fashioned way. So. Um, we're going just on a short flight from Gran Canaria to Fuerteventura, a real world flight, of course, by uh, by Binter. So just need to pop in the uh, the codes for uh, for that. So it's um, Golf Charlie Lima Papa. And I feel like I'm taking absolutely ages to type all this stuff in because it's not where uh, I would normally expect to uh, find the keys it's obviously laid out a bit different to uh, to the Airbus box but there we go so that's it now once you've selected from two don't worry if it takes a bit of time it can take uh, quite a few seconds for that to work and that's just as it's loading all the SIDS and stars etc for the uh, for the relevant uh, airports once that's sorted then make sure you press execute and that's done so we've got our departure we've got our arrival and then very very much like um, like Airbus we uh, we go and select where we're uh, where we're departing from so we're going to depart today at runway 03 uh, left according to our flight plan anyway that will then be on the coppered one alpha so we go to our uh, next page to find that there it is and execute and then if we go to the end of that flight plan, find our arrival, we're going to be arriving on runway 1, so we'll go ILS 01 Zulu, and the arrival is Coppard 3 Sierra, which is just there. There we are, and we can execute that. Now, here is the VIA list, so we need to get our charts up to check that. So if I just have a quick look to see which one we're going to be using. And it looks like it's going to be uh, Serpu. So let's select that. Done execute and that then is our flight route now because we don't have sim brief integration with this obviously this is a very short route so our standard distance of departure just meets up with our standard arrival route but of course if you're doing a longer flight where you've got to add in waypoints and you've got to add in um airways that 
actually is done pretty much exactly like the Airbus um, McDo. So you would uh, get to um, get to the uh, the waypoint at the end of your uh, SID, which in, in this case is uh, CERT's uh, cupboard, isn't it? There's our flight plan discontinuity as well, which we would want to clear out and then execute that. Um, but if we uh, if we just have a little look at uh, at that chart for the departure uh, so it goes to Copperwood if then we were flying off somewhere else before beginning our arrival then what we would do is we would find uh, Copperwood which is just here select that and then you would then type in the airway if it was an airway and then you would then pop in the airways and the waypoints, which is self-explanatory. And if you're not sure how to do that, then um, you can uh, drop me a message down below and I'll explain as it is very easy. Or better yet, get on our Discord server and uh, and we can talk you through that. But I'm sure you'll see how that, uh, that works. Of course, if you haven't got an airway to fly, then it becomes very easy. You just type in the name of a... Um, of a waypoint, um, let's just think of one May for Mayfield, which is up at uh, up at London Gatwick, so nowhere near here. But you would then just type that in, and then you would literally just press the line side key, and it would insert it just there. Obviously, not going to do that, but very very easy to do. And obviously, if Simbrief integration was included, you wouldn't have to do that. But for now, we um, we do need to do that if you're setting it all up manually like this. What is really neat in this release is that the secondary flight plan also works as well. Now, in order to access the secondary flight plan, just press the flight plan button again. You'll see there we've got secondary. So once for your main flight plan, twice for your secondary flight plan. So you can put in engine out procedures as well just here. So um, just for instance, we could select a new flight plan and copy the existing flight plan. So basically now execute that. So our uh, secondary flight plan is currently now exactly the same as our uh, our secondary flight plan. And let's just say that we wanted to uh, to depart, and then once we we're at Copper, we just wanted to enter uh, enter a hold for uh, for example. Well, that's quite straightforward to do. So we just go find Copper. Uh, press hold uh, that all computed automatically and then um, we can then if you wish you could then actually from Copwood you could select new destination and bring yourself back in to uh, Grand Canaria where we're departing again exactly the same as uh, you would do in the Airbus which if you're familiar with the channel you'll have seen us do many times I'm not going to bother doing that now in this tutorial because I know you're anxious just to see how we can get up the, the aircraft and, uh, and fly a fly a short route but great to see that that's actually working on uh, on release all right, so next then we're going to go to our performance page and we need to uh, set up all the weights and things because you'll notice if I come across to the uh, the EFB, back to our payload, you'll see that our zero fuel weight, fuel weight and gross weight isn't actually shown just there and that's because we need to put all that information here into, uh, into the box. So if we go to our uh, performance in it and then we're going to select our cruising altitude which is today according to the flight plan uh, it's going to be quite low i would imagine yeah flight level 140 so we'll pop that in and then if we uh, need to go to our alternate we haven't popped an alternate in today um but let's say yeah uh, we're just going to come back here and our alternate would be to uh, to come to uh, Gran Canaria, we could just put an alternate cruise flight level of uh, I don't know maybe five thousand feet for a nice safe hold if we've lost an engine, for example. And now we're going to go to our weights. So our zero fuel weight for today's flight. This is what we're going to get off our uh, Simbrief flight plan. So that is uh, one eight six eight six the fuel on board we've got uh, about 1500 and that automatically then calculates our gross weight now you'll see because we weren't 
exactly accurate with the fuel screen just here which you could get that zero fuel and the fuel on board um because if we have a look fuel on board actually is 1521 wasn't it so we could just update that 1521 there and does this give you a zero fuel weight uh just here no it doesn't but what you can do then is you can just add up your empty weight, your crew weight, and the payload weight. So if I just quickly do that, we've got obviously the empty weight is 13010 plus the crew weight of 362 plus our payload weight of 5340, which does come from the uh, from the weights and balance screen. That then is a total of 18712. So zero fuel weight wasn't far off. Eighteen seven one two. Pop that in. That's our fuel on board as well. And then we've got a gross weight shown there. And that updates all the figures here. You'll see as well that our Simbri flight plan, our takeoff weight is about twenty uh, tons, and um, that is pretty much as close as we need to be for our gross weight here as well. Slight discrepancies just because the uh, the figures aren't matching up exactly. If you did match up the figures exactly in the weights and balance screen by uh, typing it in rather than using the sliders, then that uh, simply profile would work uh, would work out uh, exactly as well. So good to see that that's uh, all uh, all accurate. OK, so let's carry on. We're going to go back to our performance page. So all the takeoff V speeds have been calculated. That is, of course, based on the information that we provided it with its uh, weights, etc. It already knows the runway length. Now, this isn't doing a sort of uh, what we'd call a flex takeoff in uh, Airbus or reduced derated thrust in the Boeing. Uh, this is just using a, uh, a a full sort of runway uh, length for uh, for departure. Uh, transition altitude, I don't know what that is here. Let's just uh, hazard a guess at about 5,000 feet. Let's go on to our next page. So the cruise page just here displays the cruising altitude and what we've already got set. This I also found a a little bit confusing because I thought in the cruise pages just here that it wanted us to uh, enter the dest uh, the cruise uh, on route cruise winds. Well, apparently it doesn't. It actually wants to uh, wants us to enter the uh, average wind, the mean wind for our uh, our arrival, which. Again, you can get that from a whole host of uh, different means, apps and such. Uh, you can't, I don't think, pull that up in the EFB in this aircraft. But what we can do is if we just scroll down, find the current weather, just so we've got something to pop in there. Uh, so Foot of Ventura 060 at 7. So we'll pop that in 060 at 7. Seven. Okay, on to our next page. So the approach, uh, and obviously here, then you can see that's already put in six zero seven. Also, if it's gusting as well, you can add that. There's no gusts today, thankfully. Transition altitude at Fort Ventura, no idea. We'll just pop in 5,000 feet for there. And of course, the QNH as well. Now, as I've just turned live weather off for this tutorial, we're happy to leave the QNH 1013. Obviously, what you would normally do is you would uh, you would select the correct QNH. It also gives you a VAP speed as well. I'm not sure if that also shows on uh, on here. Uh, yeah, there we go. VAP speed is 107. So it's all cross-calculated. Uh, cross and you can see if I change the... Um, if I change these values here, you'll see the required runway length. That's changing as well. So reverse thrust, etc., does make a difference. And it's already got the arrival runway length thrown in there too. So obviously it's got that data. So you don't need to go and uh, go and find it yourself. All right. So that's pretty much a basic uh, McDo setup for this aircraft. The next thing that I like about this is we actually have some uh, checklists shown on the screen here. Now, if you go over to the options page and the display click spot help, this looks quite confusing at first, but actually what you've got is you've got click spots on uh, on here, which if I just show you, well, we need to kind of maybe print a picture of this out because it becomes a bit easier then, but you've got up, down, menu, um, clear, recall, etc. So just to uh, explain what I mean, so we've got, uh, there we go, so that's up, down, and select is down here. So if we just go back up, so the final copy preparation one of two, let's um, select that. Uh, so that's just 
Fine, that procedure, let's just say we've completed that. Final copy preparation number two of two. So the parking brake is currently set. Altimeter is 1013 because we're on standard pressure. Landing elevation, don't actually know what it is, but it's probably close to sea level at Fuerteventura. Ventura. Uh, so let's say we've done that. Uh, FMS COM and NAV, so we can either select the COM frequencies and change them here just by uh, selecting if you wanted to be on Unicom uh, 122 decimal 8 and then enter and then you can toggle it over just like that um, so yeah you can uh, select those there you can select the nav by doing exactly the same thing or if you select the radio management system, I guess that's what it stands for, RMS. If you select that, you can actually just uh, type them in just here. So 121.9, which is a common use frequency for like ground. So we can pop that in there. And there you go. So if you don't want to use this, then obviously you can use the uh, radio management system panel just, uh, just on there. And that's for communications. And the navigation is also the same. OK, so we've done that. Fuel quantity and fuel on board. You can check that's just there. So that's happy. And as you're going through these, it automatically changes this screen here. So you can check what you need to do. So uh, engine fuel uh, used um, is our, uh, our next one, fuel quantity, etc. We can check that. Uh, memo panel and power management needs to be set to takeoff, as shown just there. And that procedure is complete. And then we've got before propeller rotation coming up next. OK, so we're now going to get our engine started and there's quite a neat thing the ATR can do. So it doesn't have a an APU as such. Instead, what you do is you start the engine, but you actually lock the propeller in place. So it's obviously safe for ground crew to still be walking around, etc. Um, and that then becomes essentially the the APU and it's called um, hotel mode uh, for some reason. So yeah, we're going to start engine number two, which I believe is engine number two. You have to start in this aircraft first. We're going to start engine number two and that is going to power our aircraft, but the propeller itself will not be spinning. So the aircraft is all safe. Now, in order to do that, obviously we want to check that all the doors are closed before we can, uh, before we start. So if we go to our, uh, we need to just close that page there. Uh, uh, go to our aircraft so leave the ground power on of course but let's close all of the uh, doors we can remove wheel chocks as well if you want to of course you can just select hotel mode and that will do it all for you but if you want to do it uh, using the information with the overhead what we want to do is you want to just turn on the uh, the prop brake if i can just get that right view so we want to turn that on and then we want to lock that and when we're uh, when we're ready the prop brake light should illuminate now i thought it should have illuminated as we did that it hasn't done so that may be something i'm doing wrong but we'll see that hopefully work in uh, in a minute or so so that's turned on the doors are closed and now we're going to look at uh, at starting the uh, starting the engines so before we do that i'm just going to pop the uh, the gust lock should, I think, be uh, be back just there, and then we can pop that where it should be. All right. Now, in order to start that engine, then we are going to go to the engine start selector. I'm going to start A and B over on the overhead, and as I said, it's going to be number two that uh, that we start first. So we select that, and then obviously. Let's come down and check that that is indeed working. There we can see this should get up to about 60%. Airbleed 1 is flashing. That's obviously because we're only starting engine 2 at the minute, not engine number 1. Uh, we want to check that this is in the feather position, which... There we go. It uh, It is because if it was down there it would be at fuel shut off so it wouldn't start to, it wouldn't start too well so now let's just have a look that's ready i think that actually if we just select that again because let's have a look outside i think that's actually got that engine spinning 
Yes, it has. So I'm not quite sure what I've done there or not done because I thought that should have uh, that should have locked and not started. So if you know what I've done wrong, then do leave a comment down below. And uh, oh, there we go. Prop break. Now we'll lock that. Let's have a look outside. There we go. So the engine uh, is now running, but obviously the propeller isn't spinning. Yeah, must have uh, just not selected that. Uh, correctly in the setup there. All right, so now we've done that, we're going to do exactly the same then for engine number two. Same thing, so that's start A and B, and uh, we will uh, start engine number one. Uh, same thing, check that uh, the uh, NH% percent is coming up to 60. That, of course, should also rise the IIT within 10 seconds. It is doing, and we're in the feather position down there as well. Once both engines are running then, you'll want to set flaps to 15 degrees which is done just there and you'll also want to set the uh, condition levers to auto and of course what i'm not doing is uh, going through a full setup things like getting all your lights on and things but that's self-explanatory you want your beacon light on obviously before uh, you release the uh, release the propellers for example and of course seatbelt signs no smoking signs emergency lights armed etc just as you would do in uh, in an airbus setup all right so that is about it for the full setup. The only thing to do then next, I guess, is to set up the autopilot. So in order to do that, let's just have a look. We're gonna be flying today at uh, an altitude of, what was it? Was it uh, 15,000 feet? 14, 14,000 feet. So let's select that, which is shown down here. Of course, SIDS and STARS may have other restrictions, so just be aware of those, but for this tutorial we're going to select straight up to climb out at 14 there we are okay so we're okay. now going to disconnect the external power here on the overhead so get rid of that get rid of that and of course once we've disconnected it inside the aircraft we can get rid of the ground power unit on the EFB that then is about it we are ready to uh, we're ready to taxi out so a great little feature of this aircraft is if you press the map button down here if you have a look now we actually have a little map there and you can zoom in etc to uh, to work out where we're going so we're going to taxi out to uh, runway three left i think it was for our departure today of course as uh, we do that we uh, need to make sure i've already gone and done it but we've unlocked the uh, the propellers so they should be spinning there we go. So let's um, let's have a go. We'll release our parking brake, and we can release the gusset lock as well. So a little run from us. I'm not going to worry too much about the taxiways, etc. Okay, so here we are, ready to line up Depart Runway 03. Right, let's do the rest of the autopilot setup, so making sure that this is all correct. So the FMAs that we should have uh, showing here, we want Heading Select Low to be shown. Uh, we want Pitch Hold to be shown as well, and that is done with the, uh, I believe that is the Altitude button press it twice and we get a pitch hold and we want L nav to be shown in blue now obviously at the moment I've gone and selected that heading but the uh, heading bug itself we would want to be uh, lined up with the uh, with our uh, departure track to begin with so let's get on board and then you can push that and it will line it up so uh, let's get to our uh, get to our takeoff point I'll just release the parking brakes again. Okay, so we're lined up and ready to depart. We'll just press the uh, heading bug there so we can see we've got green head and select low pitch hold and L nav. One thing that I haven't done is on the payload page, it also gives you your center of gravity and your takeoff trim. Obviously, you can set that manually or you can just press the set button and the aircraft will get it set for you. So that's what I've gone and done. We are going to take off by moving the power levers to this white notch and uh, we'll call out 70 knots, rotate obviously at 
uh, VR, which is 108, same as V1, and then the aircraft should target 170 knots for um, for our climb. Now you can either select this manually or you can select it, um, you can let the aircraft select it for you. That's done by obviously moving this here. So this is manual selection uh, which normally on other aircraft you'd have set to uh, V2 plus 20. So we'll leave that as uh, 131 uh, manual selection. It's got 116 uh, targeted at the moment. I'll leave that actually in uh, automatic for the time being. Right, let's take off and, uh, and see what happens. So with that, let's um, let's go. Let's move our power levers up to the notch, and away we go. A little bit of uh, rudder control here. Hopefully not too much, as I've got live weather turned off, so we shouldn't have too much wind. So that's just passing through 60, 70 knots. Now I have found when playing around with this aircraft that the aircraft does tend to rotate almost on its own. I can just feel it starting to come up now. There we go. So now we're going to rotate. That's it. Make sure we've got a positive rate of climb, which we do. And gear up. Alright, so now, once we're above 400 feet, we can get the autopilot on, so we're going to pop on the yaw dampener. Let's just follow the flight directors there, let's just lower that nose a little bit so the speed can climb look. And now, if we pop on the autopilot, and we don't want roll hold, we'll press that again, we want LNAV, so it's now got pitch hold engaged, and LNAV. We'll just zoom in a little bit because I do find it difficult to read some of these. Um, so LNAV and pitch hold. We've passed F speed, so let's pop the uh, pop the flaps up, gears up as well, I can we see the aircraft continuing to climb. And if we want to target 170, then let's just select 170. And if we now engage IAS mode, it will target 170. Let's just set that back, it's because we were going a little bit faster. And it locked the IS that we were currently at. Let's climb at 170 knots. We can see alt cell, so it'll capture that once it reaches it. Obviously in blue, sort of armed, same as an Airbus logic. And it's using the pitch to control the speed. Obviously we've raised the pitch of the aircraft nose, so the speed's dropping. We'll probably see that start to level off as uh, as we approach 170. There we go. There's the first right-hand turn. And there we are. So that is essentially the takeoff. Once we've reached our uh, cruising altitude, 15,000 feet then, you'll notice that the aircraft will obviously start to accelerate because there is no auto thrust on this aircraft, which means you're going to have to regulate the power yourself. So just whilst we're cruising along very quickly, still in the climb at the moment, you can see you can use this to be able to turn things on and check out different systems and zoom in and out on the map. So for example, uh, if we click down here, we should be able to turn on any bearings if we've got any uh, VORs set. I don't think we do, which is why I'm not getting any uh, any of those. Uh, the format can be changed as well by clicking over here. So that's obviously the map at the moment. We can zoom in and out. 
by selecting up and down there just a little bit easier and there's the alarm to say we're nearly at our, uh, our cruising altitude um, things like the weather radar I don't believe work you turn those on uh, turn those on down there but sadly I've not seen that work yet yeah I have tried it out in bad weather with rain and things but nothing displays I've not even been able to get a terrain radar to display but what you can see on there is the engine uh, not the engine out sorry the go around procedure the go around procedure is uh, coded in just like we got on the Phoenix aircraft so I think that's quite neat that uh, that that's there so as we're now in alt star so we're capturing that 15,000 feet we'll obviously see that the speed will start to increase and then what we are going to do is we probably want to target around 200 and uh, about 230 uh, so we will uh, we'll just go set that and obviously as uh, as the speed increases, you'll start to see the red and white sort of barber pole appear, letting you know where uh, where your overspeed is. I obviously, don't want that. So keep an eye on uh, on your power settings. I have to be very careful not to call this a thrust lever because, of course, um, it is not in uh, in the ATR. Um, so if we just keep an eye on that and have a look at the um, com panel and then the nav panel. So the frequency for the ILS that we're going to do is 109.5. Now this says it's got auto there. It's going to be interesting to see whether it does auto tune this, but if not, we can obviously dial that in and pop that in uh, manually so that it can uh, it can capture the uh, capture the ILS in a little bit. There you go. There's the uh, there's the barber pole, and we're in L nav and uh, alt at the moment. So we just want to perhaps start bringing that power setting back a little bit. For those of you wondering about VNAV and top of descent, etc., um, the way that works in this aircraft isn't too bad, although this is the first time I've actually flown it with regards to flying a, uh, a full planned flight route. So you can see that at the moment we are, oops, I've just knocked one of my thrust levers, just bear with me whilst we uh, once we get that sorted there we are uh, so at the moment autopilot is on we're in L nav and we're also following the V nav path which is selected just there that then you can see is indicated by this magenta uh, square bit like it would a, uh, a glide slope so as we are now close to uh, wanting to intercept our ILS I can see that our um, nav one has not yet auto tuned itself to the uh, the ILS frequency, so I'm going to go and pop that in myself, which is 109 decimal five. So that should now bring uh, bring that up. And if I select just here, because you were 30 miles out, we've got the ILS set as uh, as well. So at the moment we are uh, we've reduced the power to uh, to idle, obviously, as we're descending and we can look perhaps now it's starting to configure just like the uh, the Airbus we've got the, uh, the sort of speed gate lines that we can use with regards to our, uh, our flaps settings and we can also have a look now at our performance if we choose to and see that we've got a VAP speed then of 107 that's what we're going to be looking to uh, looking to target let's continue to wind that down platform altitude we said earlier was uh, two and a half thousand feet so we'll set that we're still in L nav and V nav path so the aircraft should now begin to uh, hopefully follow that and our airport is uh, for her to ensure it is over there somewhere so let's see what it's like when we land okay so we're now on the final approach we've just captured the localizer in order to do that you just need to change this from FM1 which is nav basically uh, to the ILS which we've done you can then press the approach button as long as you're on an intercept course you'll see that we've got localizer and glide slope is now captured our speed starting to drop so let's get some um, let's get some flaps out to help us with that as we do that of course just increase the power a little bit and of course we're targeting that VAP speed of 107 so how far are we away we're about seven and a half miles away that we can see now 
fair to say my landings in this are uh, certainly not uh, not the best at the moment so we'll see how we get on But ultimately, it's a very, very easy aircraft to fly. Sure, first uh, a couple of times through, there'll be things that catch you out, things like uh, I did in this video even, so uh, forgetting just to set the, uh, the power management there to, uh, to cruise. And then um, also, uh, what you didn't see was I uh, was a little bit late in catching the localizer because I forgot to move this uh, to ILS uh, number one. But you'll uh, be able to confirm that because the ILS is obviously shown in uh, in cyan or blue and the uh, the nav course is in magenta. All right, we're five and a half miles out. So let's get the landing gear down. And that's, uh, that's done. And we'll add some more flaps as well to, uh, to this. So we're going to be landing flap full which is uh, 30 degrees so we'll select that and then we're essentially fully configured for uh, for our landing here in Fuerteventura you also notice as well that as we are following the glide slope we are pitched just a little bit nose down at the moment so it doesn't look too bad actually from outside, but we're definitely going to need to initiate a flare because unlike the Airbus, we don't have it. There we go. Speed, speed. Just a little warning that we're dropping below. So let's just uh, increase that back up a little bit. I have found the speed very difficult to control in this, but that's perhaps just because I'm not used to doing it in the Airbus. So it wants just a little bit more. Very long displaced uh, threshold here at Fuerteventura. We can see the landing zone, the big two white uh, tiles, but that looks good. That's two red, that's two white. And speed's holding at uh, 104 at the minute. What if we just nudge that up ever so slightly? Doesn't need to be much. Okay, time to be brave then. Let's take off the uh, autopilot. There's the 500 call out. What we haven't done is enter the minimums. That is done by uh, these controls just here, which I can show us perhaps in a live stream at a later date. Okay, let's see if we can get this aircraft down safely. So autopilot is off. I now have control. There we go. Then a little bit of reverse as well, just to help slow us down. But then that is pretty much it. Welcome to Fuerteventura. So hopefully, guys, this has been a, uh, a very brief sort of quick start guide to flying the uh, ATR aircraft. I think it's a brilliant aircraft, one that uh, is certainly going to open up a world of different kind of operations, island hopping in particular, which is essentially what this aircraft is used for in real life as, uh, as well. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do leave a like. And of course, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell as well so you don't miss any future videos or live content. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye for now.